Lifters create lift by driving the ionized air downwards, forming an upward force. Some people say that it is easy to see that lifters do not form anti-gravity because it generates this force consistently along its own axis, regardless of the surrounding gravitational field. But the American physicist Townsend Brown believed that lifters create their own localized gravitational fields. This gravitational field is relative to their energy formed by high voltage electrical charge radiating from the emitting wire at the top of the lifter. If we look carefully we can see a purple corona like glow of light radiating from the emitting wire. If our eyes worked at a different wavelength we would be able to see that everything is radiating light waves of electromagnetic radiation continuously. Objects interact with the particle wave duality of light continuously forming new electromagnetic waves. In a new theory this universal and continuous process forms the time continuum or arrow of time itself. Therefore the uncertainty and probability of everyday life is the same uncertainty we have in quantum physics. The atoms bond together and then collapse the wave particle duality of light in unison, forming the uncertainty of their own potential future position and momentum relative to their energy or mass. The deep fundamental difference between quantum and classical mechanics is that quantum mechanics represents the forward passage of time itself. Objects form their own space-time geometry forming a square of probability. Therefore we have Einstein's famous equation energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. This theory unites quantum physics with Einstein's theory of general relativity. The outward momentum of electromagnetic radiation forms the inward force of gravity. Radiating energy will be entirely absorbed proportionally to the masses within the objects. This will cause an unbalanced force and any two objects will resonate together. Because atoms consist mostly of empty space, electromagnetic radiation of short wavelengths, like X-rays, can penetrate the objects, and therefore every single part of matter can take part in the gravitational interaction. This forms Einstein's curvature of space-time, and objects will free fall towards the greater mass with the slowest rate of time. There is no mysterious action at a distance, as in Newton's theory of gravity, because the gravitational field will propagate at the same speed that electromagnetic radiation moves, the speed of light. We have the inverse square law because the surface area of the light sphere increases with the square of the radius. Thus the strength of the gravitational field is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source. Because it is impossible to achieve absolute zero, everything is radiating electromagnetic radiation continuously. Therefore this is a universal process and all objects will form their own inertia in this way. This can best be seen in the gyroscopic force of a spinning object. I hope to base this theory on pure mathematics and therefore pure physics. I believe this can be done in just three dimensions and one variable time. Each photon electron coupling represents zero, representing a new moment in time, the moment of now, with the positive numbers marching off towards an infinite future and the negative numbers receding towards a limitless past, the positive and negative of electromagnetic waves. This theory is based on two simple postulates. The first is that the quantum wave particle function explained by Schrodinger's wave equation represents the forward passage of time or arrow of time itself photon by photon or moment by moment. The second postulate is that Heisenberg's uncertainty principle that is formed by the wave function is the same uncertainty that we have with any future event. Modern physics has no understanding of why we have an arrow of time or a future and a past but time in this theory is a continuous process forming the future geometry of space-time. Time is a hidden variable of quantum mechanics. 
In quantum atom theory, the atoms interact with light waves of electromagnetic radiation, continuously collapsing the quantum wave particle function, forming photons that form electrical charge and in turn form electrical magnetic fields in three dimensions. This forms a local space-time geometry. A time-varying electric field acts as a source of a magnetic field and a time-varying magnetic field are the source of electric fields. When either field is changing in time, then a field of the other is induced. This will be relative to the position and momentum of the objects creating the time variation, the atoms themselves. There is a complete and perfect symmetry between positive and negative electric charge. In every particle variety there exists an antiparticle counterpart that forms a profound symmetry within the space-time geometry of our universe. In this theory, the continuous formation and breaking of these symmetries relate not just to space, but represent the forward flow of time, or passage of time itself. In modern physics, everything has its own reference frame that will have its own proper time relative to its energy or mass. The greater the mass, the slower time runs in that reference frame forming Einstein's curvature of space-time. We all have our own reference frame and have our own proper time. I could set up a wave function of where I might be tomorrow and it would have the same uncertainty and probability as the wave function of quantum physics. Therefore we are all in a unique position at the centre of our own reference frame and can look back in time in all directions at the beauty of the stars when we look down into the atoms, we can see time-dependent quantum mechanics, when the atoms bond together, forming their own beauty of their own symmetry and geometry. But when we zoom in on an individual atom, we find time-independent quantum mechanics, and there is no flow or arrow of time, and all we have is the measurement problem. Each new photon can be measured either as a point in space over a period of time, or as an area of space at a moment in time, but not as both. This is because the observer is always in the moment of now, collapsing the waves of light into new photons of energy that will only be relative to the wavelength of the light and the position and momentum of the observer. We have time dilation for an object accelerating towards the speed of light and gravitational time dilation around objects of great mass because the greater the momentum, the shorter the wavelength and the higher the frequency. The frequency of an accelerating object will increase relative to the received frequency that will therefore be reduced by the Renz factor. As the inward absorption and outward emission of electromagnetic radiation is reduced, the duration of a clock cycle will increase for the accelerating object and time will be measured to run more slowly in that reference frame in this theory, at the quantum level of the atoms, the moment of now is created by a single photon-electron coupling, creating a wave function of future possibilities. It is because the observer can choose when and where to collapse the wave function that we have free will. Life will create its own ripples in the fabric of space-time, forming its own broken symmetry of its own evolutionary path or timeline. It is because this process is at the same rate that light moves, that the speed of light between the atoms will always be a universal constant, independent of the motion of the source. This can also explain why light is so beautiful when it strikes an object. It is because we are looking at a moment of pure creation of time and space. The only way to see this happen directly by light is in the two-slit experiment. When the waves reach the screen with the two slits, they will react with the electrons of the screen. This will collapse the wave particle duality of the light, creating new quantum particles in space and new moments in time. The part of the wave that does not come in contact with the screen will expand in all possible routes, going through both slits as two wave fronts. Interference between the waves will cause them to superimpose or cancel each other out. When these waves come in contact with the screen, they will collapse, creating a quantum creating quantum particles in space and time in the shape of an interference pattern. When the observer turns on a detector to determine which slit a photon passes through, 
the interference pattern will collapse. This is because to observe the photon we have to create a photon-electron coupling, collapsing each wavefront into a new quantum particle that will have its own position in space and time. If we turn the detector off, we remove the photon-electron coupling, and in time the interference pattern will reform. Just like in Newton's first law of motion, the interference pattern will continue to maintain its state unless acted upon by an external force. We have Einstein's curvature of space-time because of the spherical shape of the quantum wave particle function. This is why we have pi in the equations representing the shape of the wave function in three-dimensional space-time. We also have pi in the equation for Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. This is why pi is an irrational number and keeps on going forever, just like time, never forming a regular pattern with all the properties of a random number just like probability, except that each of its digits are known. There is always the same amount of even and odd numbers in the continuous sequence of pi. Just like if you continuously tossed a coin, you would create a sequence of numbers with the same amount of odd and even numbers, or heads and tails. The polarization of the light will be the same for the entire surface of the light sphere, creating quantum entanglement and the symmetry and geometry of space-time. We can see that the atoms form their own space-time geometry and symmetry because the curvature of space-time has left something behind in the curvature of solid objects. There is no straight lines in nature from the curvature of the moon to the bow of a tree to the growth rings of the tree itself. Everything will look within the diversity of nature. We can see a continuous process of symmetry forming and breaking from seashells to spiral galaxies to the evolution of life itself this process is formed by the momentum of light forming the arrow of time and the geometry of space-time. Quantum probability, we cannot predict when an individual nucleus will decay in a radioactive sample. Therefore we have the half-life, the time it takes half the nuclei in a sample to decay over a period of time. This is the same probability we have in classical physics of our everyday life. If we take a group of people, we cannot predict the life of an individual person of the group, but we can calculate a half-life for the whole group, statistically, over a period of time. This might sound childlike, but it is based on the correspondence principle, and has a one-to-one -one correspondence between an element of the theory and an element of reality. We have probability propagating according to the laws of cause and effect. This gives us a coherent physical interpretation of quantum physics. Objects will form their own space-time geometry relative to their energy or mass. They will also form the uncertainty of their own future potential as time unfolds. The Planck constant H is a constant of action within the geometry of space-time forming part of a physical process that forms an independent objective reality that we can interact with forming the possible into the actual. We see and feel this as the forward passage of time and as the uncertainty and probability of everyday life. We see a temporary image of the universe moment by moment continuously changing made up of an infinite number of photons. Each electron needs its own three-dimensional space-time Two electrons require six dimensions, three electrons require nine dimensions, and so on. But no two electrons can share the same quantum state at the same time. This is just like saying that an electron can't be in two places at the same time, just like any other object in our everyday life. Because classical mechanics is an approximation of quantum mechanics, we only ever have three dimensions and the other dimensions represent a potential sequence of future events that form the probability of the time continuum. In this theory, it is because time only moves forward that the matrix mathematics of quantum mechanics does not obey the commutative law of multiplication, in which x times y is always equal to y times x. This is because this process represents the passage of time itself and therefore the mathematics only goes one way, 
just like the arrow of time. Add to this that the probability of the wave function only works one way in time. It is within the rules of quantum physics to calculate backwards and work out what the position and momentum was at some time in the past, exactly as we can in classical physics of our everyday life. It makes no difference if you use Schrodinger's wave equation or the matrix algebra of Heisenberg's quantum particles. This theory gives us an intuitive picture capturing the existence of an underlying layer of reality. That gives us an objective reality to quantum mechanics as a process of continuous symmetry forming and breaking, a process of continuous creation. The answer to the problem of infinity is that it only has the potential probability to exist. Aristotle was the first to introduce the idea of something being potentially infinite. The reason why we can always divide infinity into sets of infinities is because of this continuous process of the wave particle function collapsing into new quantum particles of space and time. This forms a continuous expansion at the quantum level that forms the continuum of time and the geometry of space-time that can always be divided into sets of infinities. A mathematician will continuously form his own space-time geometry just like any other object in our universe. Therefore it is only natural that he will be able to divide that geometry into infinitely smaller parts. This is no different to how larger objects like planets form their own gravity relative to their energy or mass, forming Einstein's curvature of space-time. We are all active participants in the dynamics of our universe. It is because this process is continuous that our number system is infinite and we have an infinite series of whole numbers. In this theory we have a potential infinity of probabilities at every degree and angle of space-time because the quantum wave particle function is continuously collapsing and reforming. Therefore one thing after another is always coming into existence as part of the time continuum. This can be explained mathematically by what Cantor called the continuum hypothesis because it deals with the continuum of numbers between 0 and 1. Cantor discovered that we have more than one kind of infinity and that there are more numbers between 0 and 1 than there are whole numbers. What Cantor had found was a mathematical structure to infinity that could be divided up into sets. Infinity was no longer just an abstract idea and could be explained by set theory. Set theory lies at the heart of mathematics, but Cantor's set theory relies on there being a choice of choosing one member of any non-empty subset. This has caused a problem because there is no explanation of human interaction of how the choice is to be made. In this theory, we have physical starting point to any infinite series. We can choose when and where to collapse the quantum wave particle function, forming new particles in space and new moments in time. This will form a new wave function of future potential that will expand out from zero in all directions along the x and y axis as part of an infinite series. Just as Cantor could mathematically build up a never-ending series of larger and larger infinities starting from its base between 0 and 1, this theory can also do the same in the physical world. Therefore the infinities of the mathematics of quantum electrodynamics are not a problem. They represent the continuum of time itself that is infinite and there is no need for the process called renormalization. Newton believed the universe to be a true infinity. In the creation of calculus, Newton thought in terms of motion and fluidity, not in terms of the infinitely small. This continuous process of change can be seen as a universal process of symmetry forming and breaking that forms fractional self-similarities. Fractional chaos theory shows that it is possible to have infinity in a finite world. 
All we need is a way of dividing space up into infinitely smaller portions. This theory explains a process of how space-time can be continuously formed that can always be divided up mathematically into infinitely smaller portions. The forward momentum of light or electromagnetic radiation is continuously collapsing and reforming. This forms a universal fractal branching process that forms the geometry of space-time and the arrow of time itself. This also explains the incompleteness theorem that says that some problems in mathematics can't be solved no matter how you approach the problem. This is because the universe is in a process of continuous creation and even using mathematics we can never have a complete picture of what the future might hold. This is why we have the measurement problem and can never know the position and momentum of a quantum particle at the same time because it would be like trying to predict part of our own future. Something is in existence or it has the potential to exist but never both. In this theory mathematical infinity, physical infinity and absolute infinity are all one of the same. To quote William Blake, if the door of perception were cleansed everything would appear to man as it is, infinite. If the laws of physics are universal then this process formed by the wave particle duality of light must be happening everywhere and must affect everything even consciousness itself. Despite rapid progress much about how the brain works remains a mystery, but what we do know is that our brains work by electrical impulses forming chemical changes. This electrical activity also forms electromagnetic fields. If these electrical impulses that cause chemical changes are formed by photons, then consciousness is formed by the physics of quantum mechanics. Therefore our thought processes could be seen as the most advanced part of a universal process and our hopes and dreams could be forming their own future space-time geometry.